Hey everyone, it's Julie. Today, I wanted to talk about these celebrities being diagnosed with MS and a possible diet connection. Let's get into it. So I was watching this ET video about Christina Applegate recently being diagnosed with MS. And in the video, they also feature some other celebrities who have also been diagnosed with MS and kind of just their struggles with it as well. So they also mention Selma Blair. She struggled with MS for a while. They mention Jamie Lynn Siegel. Now I'm not saying, okay, I know I do a lot of like vegan content and stuff. I'm not saying that like a vegan diet necessarily, I've got a ghost behind me. <laughs> necessarily contributes to MS. I'm particularly looking at certain nutrients. So I found this study that looked into different nutritional factors that could contribute to MS and they highlighted two very important nutrients. B12 is one of them and vitamin D is another one. People with MS were found to have less of these nutrients and yeah, they thought that this could be a contributor to MS. Now, if you've seen my video on Nutrition by Victoria's daughter and her eye thing that was caught on video that she put on a video, you'll see that that could be a symptom of early MS for her daughter. I've also done a video more recently on how vegans may be more susceptible to low intrinsic factor, which means they may not be absorbing their B12 supplements. How scary is that? And a lot of vegans don't know to supplement vitamin D or think, oh, we live in a sunny climate, like we should be fine. I don't know. I'm not too convinced. When I was in Hawaii, as I've said before, I, I was out in the sun all the time and I was diagnosed with low vitamin D. So it can happen. But moving on to these celebrities, I just looked into the celebrities a tiny bit. I don't follow these celebrities like, like a crazy fan. I'm just looking, Googling, doing some searches. And one thing I noticed about both Christina Applegate and also Selma Blair is that they both at some points followed a macrobiotic diet. And I believe Christina said that she was vegetarian since she was 15. And Selma, I believe she was only macrobiotic later, but my thought is it's probably not helping her MS because the macrobiotic diet would predispose you to low vitamin B12 and low vitamin D unless you know to take them and unless you're absorbing them properly. Another thing I will note is that Selma Blair does you know, she did struggle with an alcohol problem before. So there is a possibility that that could deplete your nutrition too, right? I just thought it was interesting that they both did follow <laughs> macrobiotic diets at some point. <laughs> yeah, go back under the covers. I also... <laughs> Get out of my film. Your beautiful face cannot be in my film. Now, Jamie Lynn Siegel, she did have an eating disorder in the past, which would also predispose her to possible vitamin, nutrient, mineral deficiencies. But she also now is including more vegetables in her diet, vegetables and fruit in her diet. I noticed she's drinking more smoothies. I'm hoping she's not going down this veg vegan path, but who knows? I don't know. I think it's important to note that not necessarily the diet is causing MS. Hello. Ew, stop doing that. Don't spit on the floor. Oh, but it just kind of highlights the dangers of these kind of experimental diets where we don't know whether they're going to work properly. We don't know whether you're going to absorb all the nutrition, as I've said in my B12 video. And a lot of people don't really know what to 
supplement or what they're missing or people aren't doing blood tests every you know two weeks to find out right so i'm very sympathetic to these people who are going through this medical condition which is not fun it's debilitating it's very sad and i pray that it's not their diets that kind of contributed to this but I think it's very possible that these weight loss diets, they, celebrities use macrobiotic diets for weight loss. And in the end, is that going to be worth it? Is it worth the weight loss when you could potentially develop these debilitating diseases? And is it really preventing disease when it's causing other things potentially? So my condolences go out to them, but I really do hope that they can look into more nourishing traditions type diets, ancestral diets, diets containing more animal products to help I would say, I, I don't know, I'm no expert, I'm not a medical expert, but I do believe that this could really help with their condition because MS has to do with the nerves, has to do with the demyelination of nerves, which is the sheath around the nerve. And when that sheath comes off, basically, or gets degraded, that's when you get these different kind of MS, B12 type symptoms. So demyelination, anything to do with that demyelination. So if you can eat nutrition that helps with the nerves, can you remyelinate the nerve? If a lack of nutrition contributed to the disease, it can't hurt to have more nutrition. And just a little message to Nutrition by Victoria. I hope you've taken your daughter to a doctor and had this issue looked at. And I really hope you do consider, at least for your kids, putting in some animal products. You can continue your durian rider freely, weight loss diet, I'm not, I mean, I'm concerned for you if, you if you do do that, but at the same time, your daughter seems to be suffering potentially from your diet. And I really hope that you consider adding in some animal products. And what I really hope to get across with a lot of my videos here is the weight loss is not worth it. It's just not worth the damage you could potentially cause your body. You could potentially cause a debilitating disease. I don't think that vegans can prove otherwise that it's not causing these things. And to say it wasn't veganism that caused it, veganism contributes to nutrition deficiencies. That is for sure. There are many studies on that. And it's an experimental diet. So again, it's not worth it. It's not worth it, people. Just let your body come to its natural weight. And that's something Flo with Clo put out a really amazing post on Instagram the other day about, you know, your ideal weight or your natural weight. And basically her message was, you can't pick your body's weight. As much as some people would love to pick their body's weight, oh, I'd love to be this. You can't pick your body's weight. Your body naturally wants to gravitate towards a certain weight. And her message was you kind of just need to let it and to just do the, the healthy habits like eating a nourishing, nutrient dense diet, moving with, I think she says like moving with joy, you know, you don't have to do exercise painstakingly, like move because you want to move because your body has the energy to move because it makes you feel good. I'd love to do a video on movement soon, actually. And just take care of yourself, get sleep, take care of your, your mental health and let your weight fall where it does. Thank you for listening and I'll see you in another video.